Hi DIYers, this is Michael from AlarmGrid, and today I'm going to be showing you how to enroll or program a DSC PG9905 temperature sensor. Uh, that's the PowerG temperature sensor with your Qualsys IQ Panel 2 Plus security system. Uh, all versions of the Qualsys IQ Panel 2 Plus, um, they support PowerG sensors such as the PG9905 temperature sensor. So that's what we're going to be enrolling today. Um, now, the main reason you're doing this, um, you'll be able to get alerts on the system if it detects an unusually high or low temperature. Um, the, the big thing that the sensor is associated with is alarm.com usage. Um, you know, obviously, if you're in the house at the moment, you're going to know if the temperature is off, if it's extremely high or it's extremely low. So uh, having this work locally, you know, it's not necessarily going to help you out too much. Maybe if you have it in a wine cellar or something, you know, you're monitoring a specific area. But the, the main application of the sensor is to know that your HVAC system, your air conditioning, your heater in your inner home or your business is not operational at the moment. And, you know, maybe you're away on vacation or you're just away for the day and, you know, something went wrong and you want to fix this before it becomes a problem. You know, in the winter months, um, this could lead to the pipes freezing. Or if it's, you know, just during, you know, the summer months coming home to an uncomfortable home. So um, knowing that you're your home or your office is in the proper temperature, you know, it gives you peace of mind. So that's what the sensor is monitoring for. But uh, there is one big limitation that I do want to talk about with the sensor. Um, if you have it to where it's monitoring out, where your system will report to alarm.com, so that way you can get the remote alerts, you're only going to be able to do the high temperature monitoring or the low temperature monitoring. You won't be able to do both with the same sensor. So it's kind of an unfortunate limitation. If you're doing it locally only, you actually can monitor for both. And you're going to see that as I go into the programming. You're going to see that the setting you know, goes away when I try to set it to an option where it's going to do both high and low. Like I'm only going to be able to choose. So if I want to do high and low, then I would have to get a second temperature sensor. So it's just, you know, it's, it's a limitation. But, um, and, and for a lot of users, it's not necessarily going to matter as much because, you know, depending on the type of year it is, you're not really going to have to monitor for necessarily the low temperature or and the high temperature at the same time. It's either going to be too cold or it's going to be too hot. So, you know, and you can always go back and reprogram the sensor based on the time of year if you want to do that option. So that is an option there. But um, anyway, I've been talking for a bit, so let's get into the programming of the sensor, so then you'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, but this, we're just going to program it like most any other um, uh, PowerG sensor. Uh, the first thing we actually want to do, though, before we go and play on the system, we're going to go and open up the sensor, uh, because we will have to press and hold an enrollment button on, on the sensor. So uh, the way the sensor works, um, we're actually going to switch our Phillips head over to a flathead first. Um, so we have our flathead screwdriver right here. And what we have here is we have a little tab spot um, on the, the sensor here. Um, the, this is the cover right here that we need to get to, because there's a screw underneath, but we need to pry this off first. So we're just going to stick it in there, and you see we just take it off like that. Just kind of um, you know put it into the hole and into the little slot thing, and um, you know you can take it right off. So now we have our, our screw that we've accessed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch this over to a Phillips head now, and um, so you know use two screwdrivers if that would take. So in our case, we have this handy dandy reversible one. So um, we we have our screw uh, head right here. We're just going to go in, and we're going to loosen it up a little bit. So, um, here, just going to get in there. Okay, there we go. I had to play around with it a little bit, but we did get it loosened up, and now it's it's off. So we're gonna we're not gonna um, close this uh, for the rest of the video. We're just gonna keep it open so you can see the inside. Um, but this is what we have to access here. We have our enrollment button right there. Um, it's next to the little terminals, and that's a CR123A battery, also known as camera battery, uh, lithium battery is what you want to use. But that's not why we're here today. Um, but you will want to have the battery inserted when you're doing this enrollment process. Um, so that's the enrollment button right there, and we're gonna come back to that once I get to the Qualsys IQ Panel 2 Plus to the proper menu. So so we're going to you know, take this out of our screensaver here, and we're at the main screen of our Qualsys IQ Panel 2 Plus. We're going to click the small gray bar at the top, and we're going to choose Settings. And we're going to try again. We're going to choose Settings, and then we're going to choose Advanced Settings. It's going to ask us for a code. And in our case, we can do the installer code. So we'll do 1111. One, one. That's the default. Uh, we'll do that now. One, oh, I pressed two there. <laughs> one, 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 one there. All ones. And uh, we get to the next menu here. So we're going to choose Installation, and we're going to choose Devices. And we're going to choose Security Sensors. And then we're going to go to Auto Learn Sensor. So now we're at the menu on the Qualsys IQ Panel 2 Plus where we can auto learn in the sensor. So we're going to send in the enrollment signal from, from the sensor to the panel. Um, but I do want to just go over the process a little bit. Um, just to, the quick, uh, quick and dirty thing that you're going, to, you're going to do, you're just going to press and hold the button until it's a solid orange LED. And then you're going to let it go. And that sends the enrollment signal. 
Now, if you're having trouble and you're finding that that's not working, then what you can do is you can do a factory default of the sensor. So to do that, you press and hold the enrollment button again. You'll get the orange LED, but you keep holding it this time. And then you're going to get three red, uh, red flashes, red LED flashes. And that's so you know that you've done a factory default. And that's not a power D sensor. That is another sensor that is trying to learn in, but we don't want that right now. So, so we're going to press and hold the button now until we get an orange LED. And there we got the orange LED, we release. And there we have auto learn power G sensor. So that way we know that it's the power G sensor, sensor that's trying to learn in. So we're going to choose OK. And now we're going to go through the programming options here. Um, so sensor DLID, uh, we're fine with that. We just keep that as is. Um, that we auto enrolled it, so we're good with that. Um, temperature, that's what we want it to be. Um, you see that we're also going to have the option for freeze. Um, so if you are doing low temperature monitoring, that's what you would want to choose. Um, but if you're doing the high temperature monitoring, or if you're doing local monitoring only, it's where you can choose both high and low monitoring, then uh, temperature is also what you want to choose. You're going to see what I mean in a little bit when we get into sensor group, which is actually the next option. But we'll, we'll, do, uh, we'll do temperature um, just for the example here. Um, but for sensor group, you see that there's going to be three options. Um, okay. Now, we now you have temp non-reporting. That's sensor group 51. You see that there's both a high and low threshold set. Now, if I choose temp reporting, you're going to see that the low threshold goes away. We can only do the, the high temperature reporting. So um, like I said, that's the limitation. If you're having a report out to alarm.com, so that way you can get the notifications um, you know, via uh, text message or email, um, then you're only going to be able to choose one or the other. So if we wanted to choose low temperature, then we would choose freeze in combination with uh, the freeze option there. Um, so that you see that we get the low option only. Um, so like, like I said, it's a limitation. You're either going to get the high monitoring or the low monitoring. So let's say we want to do the high monitoring. Let's, let's do that. So we're going to do temperature. And then we, we, we want to choose, we we choose temp reporting. If we choose that temp non-reporting, then it's not going to report out. Um, but you see, it only gives us the option of the, the high threshold. So in our case, it's set to 100. Uh, let's say we want to set it a little bit higher. Let's say we wanted to know when it's uh, 110. Whenever it's uh, 110 or higher, it detects that. Um, it's going to you know, send an alert out. It's going to trigger you know, the fault on the system, the fault on the zone. And um, so that, that's what you set it to. If, if you want to set it to lower, you can choose that. Um, but in this case, it is looking for the high thresholds, detected temperature. So um, and everything else is pretty straightforward here. Uh, we have the sensor name. If we wanted to choose a different name, then uh, we could choose um, family room temperature. Um, OK. Um, if, if we wanted to choose custom description, we have the option. We can go and enter something in. Uh, we do like. Um, we can do test there. Um, so you can just choose whatever you want there and press the little button to confirm. Uh, so there are you know, different names that you can put in there. Uh, chime type, th these are different chimes that you can listen to. Uh, if we do heaven, that, that's heaven apparently. So um, you can choose the one that you like. Um, and voice prompts, that's just going to have the system speak out uh, when, it does, when there is a fault um, that will be what it reads. Um, it'll, it'll read the sensor name. But um, you'll have it actually speak out if you set that to on. And uh, the source is PowerG, um, and that is fine because this is a PowerG sensor. So we're just going to choose Add New. And um, it looks like it took us back there. Um, let's get back into that menu and make sure that it did add that. Um, Entering user code. Entering user code. And we're going to go to Installation Devices, uh, Security Sensors. Um, we're actually we're going to choose Edit Sensor. You're going to see that it didn't add that in. Um, I guess it didn't take my command properly. So we're going to try this again real quick. Uh, we're just going to learn it in until it's the orange LED. And we have it. And we're going to choose OK. Um, for whatever reason, it didn't like us there. So we're going to try that again here. Uh, we're going to set that back to uh, temp reporting, not freeze, temp reporting. And we're going to set it back to 110, where we had it. Let's go through the process again, I, I suppose, um, so that way you can see everything. Um, and uh, we'll keep our temperature name at, we'll, we'll change it to something else. We'll change it to garage temperature. And we'll change our, we liked heaven, so we'll go, we'll go with that. We'll keep voice prompts on, power G. And this time we're going to choose add new, hopefully. And this time I pressed it rather than pressing the home button, and it actually did take us through. So that's how you know. That's how you know that the, the sensor added successfully. And you, you will want to close your sensor so that way it doesn't give you the tamper message. But we're fine with that for now. Um, so that's how you enroll um, a PowerG PG9905 temperature sensor with a Qualysys IQ Panel 2 Plus security system. If you have any questions about the PG9905, the Qualysys IQ Panel 2 Plus, or about alarm monitoring services in general, send an email to support at alarmgrid.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up below to like the video. And remember to subscribe to our channel for updates on future videos. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.